Greetings geologists. The purpose of this video is to show how one can use the Visible Geology app that's freely available on the internet to do a fold analysis. Now the reason that this is important is because we, when we look at folds, when we study folds, we need to be able to interpret their geologic history and particularly the relationship of the fold to the tectonic processes. And so describing the orientation, measuring and describing the orientation of the axial plane of a fold is really important because the axial plane is going to be perpendicular to the sigma 1, the maximum principal stress direction. So there are lots of different kinds of folds that we can study uh, geologically. And um, their orientations of these folds is going to depend on the directions of the maximum principal stresses at the timing of, of the deformation. So the whole purpose of a fold analysis is to relate the uh, orientation of the fold to the tectonic processes. So what we want to do is come up with a way of quantitatively describing this axial plane. Now that's a little bit tricky to do. And there are a lot of um, videos that are available online on YouTube uh, to show how to use a stereo net for this. Most of those are showing the standard videos with tracing paper. And that's a you know, great technique, and everybody should know how to do that. But there's a real utility in, in using the applications, um, the electronic software, to do this instead, particularly during a pandemic when we're trying to reduce how much paper gets transferred between people. So I'm having my students in my structural geology class do fold analysis completely using the online app called Visible Geology. We'll get to that in just a minute. Now, before you start plotting data on the stereo net, it's really, really important to qualitatively describe that fold. So you've got a fold that's plotted on a map here, and I just made this up. I just um, created my own fold. And um, we've got strike and dip measurements. We've got data that's available. And you want to be able to look at that fold and say, what kind of a fold is it? And we should be able to look at this fold just from what I've drawn here and see that it is an anticline that's plunging towards the southwest. We have two limbs of the anticline with strike and dip measurements measured and indicated right here. Um, at point A, it's striking 41 degrees and dipping 47 degrees. That's using the right-hand rule, where the dip direction is clockwise or to the right from the strike direction. And at point B, it's striking 209 degrees towards the southwest and dipping 35 degrees towards the northwest. So we have our two limbs, and we can use these two measurements to find the axial plane. So when you're doing this um, stereo net, um, analysis of a fold, you, you need to choose two points on opposing limbs that are, that are roughly on opposite sides from one another on the fold. And oftentimes that's going to be on your stereo net, the two poles to the bedding that are the most widely spaced on the stereo net. Um, or geographically plotted on the map, they're going to be basically on opposite limbs of the fold. So these two will work just fine. And remember what we're doing here is we are, we are um, using these two strike and dip measurements to illustrate two continuous planes that are intersecting somewhere. Now the important thing you want to do here is describe the fold and get a sense of the orientation of its axial plane on the map or in the real world. So we, sh we, know, that the axial we know that the fold is plunging towards the southwest here. And so the hinge line is going to be trending to the southwest and, and dipping in that and plunging in that direction. And we know that the axial plane ought to be bisecting this fold. So we have a trace of an axial plane that ought to be coming right through like this. And if we do a cross section, we'd see that the trace of the axial plane would be bisecting the fold in cross section too. And we should get a sense that in this case, the axial plane is nearly vertical. It's not going to be quite vertical, but nearly vertical. And so we want to make a note of that nearly vertical axial plane. The reason that that is important is because when you plot something on a stereo net, all you're plotting is two planes. And that is not illustrating their spatial relationships in the real world. So if this is just a cross section showing the trace of two intersecting planes, 
where they intersect is a line, and that's going to be our hinge line no matter what. But remember, we have four possible folds that could be illustrated with these same two intersecting planes. It could be a syncline. This is a cross-section view, right? It could be a syncline. It could be an anticline. In either one of those cases, it's going to have an axial plane which is nearly vertical. There's the trace of it with that dashed green line. Or it could be a recumbent fold that's opening to the west in this case, or a recumbent fold that's opening to the east. And in either one of those cases, we're going to have a nearly horizontal axial plane. So we need to know what our spatial relationships are in the real world, what it looks like on the map. And that's going to be important in our fold analysis because we need to make sure that we are choosing the correct axial plane that we're plotting because we have two to choose from. And in this case, we're going to be plotting the one that is nearly vertical. So here is our fold that we're going to be working on. Okay, so here are strike and dip measurements we're going to be plotting using the StereoNet app on visible geology. So let me exit from this PowerPoint, and we're going to go to visible geology. And you can find this just by doing a Google search of visible geology, or it's app.visiblegeology.com. And there are a lot of really cool things to work with on this, but um, we want to use the StereoNet application here. So we're going to click on that. And here is our StereoNet. Now, there are a lot of other good StereoNet applications that are widely available. My other favorite is Almendinger StereoNet app, and he's been producing these since the um, early 1990s or maybe even the late 1980s. And um, his widely available app is has a great deal of functionality, and it's more powerful than this app, but it's a little bit more difficult to use. And this has one function that I really like that this stereo net, we can easily rotate it so we can see what it looks like in three dimensions. And it's really straightforward to plot things on the stereo net. We can either hover on the stereo net and we can see it's going to plot a pole and a great circle. If I, if I click once, it plots a pole. There it is. If I click twice, it clocks a, plots a pole and a great circle. So it's really easy to plot things and then we can enter in data manually as well. Get rid of those two. So let's enter in the data manually. We'll start with the southeast limb, and we're going to be plotting this as a pole. I'll call it southeast limb. And if you remember from our diagram, it is striking 41 degrees and dipping 209 degrees. And we can choose whatever color we want. Sometimes this app gives us some really awful colors, So, but this blue color is really good. I want some contrasting colors in my plot. It'll make it easier to see. So 41, oops, I plotted the wrong one, and 47. And we're going to plot both the plane and the pole. I'm going to make our pole a little bit bigger by plotting it a width of 2. So here is our southeast limb, and it's, it's striking to the northeast and dipping to the southeast. So if we go back to our diagram, that's this, this limb, striking to the northeast, dipping to the southeast, 41 and 47. Now we need to put our northwest limb in. And this one we had striking at 209 degrees to the southwest and dipping 35 degrees to the northwest. And here's this awful color. Uh, let's make this a nice red color instead. That'll work great for us. Again, I like to plot both the plane and the pole for this exercise, and we'll increase the line width to 2. That just makes the pole a little bit bigger. It doesn't seem to affect the width of that great circle that it plots. So there are the two limbs of our fold. Now, where those two limbs are intersecting, is the hinge line. So this is the hinge line. I can, I can hover over it and see right now that the trend is 217 and the plunge is 5 degrees. So there is the hinge line. Of course, it's a southwest plunging fold, so that makes perfect sense to us. Now we plotted both the planes and their poles because the poles to these planes are going to line up on a great circle if it's a cylindrical fold. That's important. If it's not a cylindrical fold, then those poles might be all over the place. 
But this is a well-behaved cylindrical fold, and if it's only two planes, it's always going to be cylindrical, I guess. So they're going to line up on a great circle, and I can fit my great circle to it really nicely here. Look what I'm doing. And with two points or with two planes, it works great. If you have multiple planes, it's going to be a little bit messier. But notice that the great circle that they fall upon, the pull to that great circle is the hinge line. So now I'm going to do a double click. And I have just plotted a third plane. And this plane we call the profile plane. The profile plane has all of the pulls to the bedding if it's a cylindrical fold. And it also has the hinge line, which is the pull to that. And this color is going to work well for us. So now we have it. So let's take a look at this in 3D. We have our two planes that are intersecting and the profile plane to those. And the profile plane has all the poles to the bedding along that fold. So if we had, if we had multiple bedding orientations, we should see that they all fall along this profile plane. And the two that we we'll want to measure are generally going to be the two that are the most widely spaced of all of those poles meaning there are going to be the poles that represent the bedding on opposite limbs of the fold. So what we need to do is figure out what the midpoint is between these two poles, because that midpoint is going to be a line which should also fall within the axial plane of that fold. Now remember, there are two possible axial planes. There's one that's more or less vertical, and there's one that's more or less horizontal. And we can visualize them if we look like this. Let me turn off my profile plane here a second. We've got one axial plane that should come through like this, more or less vertical, and then another one which would be intersecting the fold like this, almost horizontal. We, of course, want the vertical one. And that vertical, nearly vertical profile plane is going to include both the hinge line of the fold, because the hinge line is always in the axial plane, and it's going to include the midpoint uh, between these two poles on the profile plane. So now I'm going to turn that profile plane back on, and we need to find that midpoint. Now this gets a little bit tricky using this app, but a little bit of practice will help. You can click on your mouse and drag it, but you have to be careful that you don't go upwards with your mouse, and you can, you can rotate that plot on the stereo net. Oops. Takes a little bit of practice, and we should be able to rotate it so that those two... I'm getting really close, but not perfect. There, I'll call that done. We're about a degree off, and that's about as close as we're going to get on this app in this case. So it takes a little bit of practice, but we can, we can rotate that like we like it, this is similar to rotating the tracing paper on a stereo net um, if you're working in the old paper version of this so we rotated the the plot on top of our stereo net to to get that profile plane to align parallel to a great circle on the stereo net and then both of those poles also lie on a great circle of the stereo net and now we can zoom in a little bit and we want to find the midpoint on this great circle. So we see we're about three degrees um, below this small circle here, the heavier gray line. So I'm going to count every 10 degrees from there. So I'll go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 degrees would be right there, and it's about two more degrees. So we got about an 82 degree difference between those two poles on that great circle. So now to find the midpoint, I need to just split that 82 by 2. So I'm going to get 41 degrees. So it's going to come 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees would be here. And 41 degrees is going to be right here. I'm going to do a single click just to plot a midpoint. And I just need to see that. But I'm going to call it midpoint or the midpoint between the two poles. There's, there's my midpoint. 
So now we can rotate this back to where it's supposed to be. And all we need to do is fit a great circle that includes both the midpoint here and the hinge line to our fold. And I can experiment around, move this around a little bit till I get to that. And we should see that the pull to that great circle where the crosshairs are in the lower right, the pull to that great circle should also lie on the profile plane. I'm going to do a double click now, one, two, and we plotted a plane. And it gave it this awful yellow color, so I'm going to give that a better color so we can see it better. Let's give it a nice green color. We'll make it pretty bright here. And we'll call this two. And this should be our axial plane. And we'll see if we can convince ourselves of this now. So let me turn off the profile plane so we can't see that. And we just want to see the two planes of the limbs of the fold and the axial plane that we just found. And there we can see, and that makes us happy. We see that axial plane bisects that fold really nicely. Now remember, there's another potential axial plane that's nearly horizontal. And if, we've, if we use that axial plane, which is not the axial plane of this fold, but it will be the axial plane of two, two other two planes, the other possible axial plane, that axial plane would go through this pole, which would be the other possible midpoint. If we counted outwards from these two poles, we would find this would be our midpoint, and we could have an axial plane that goes through both that and the hinge line like this. But that's not the case here. But what that is now, of course, is this green mark here is the pole to the axial plane, which is also the sigma 1 direction, because sigma 1 is perpendicular to our axial plane. So I can, I can hover over that, and there's our sigma 1 direction. It trends 126, plunges 6 degrees, and our actual axial plane, that green plane, we can interrogate it here, has a strike of 216 and a dip of 84. Yes, it's nearly vertical. So we have just found the strike and the dip of the axial plane. We have found the trend and plunge of the hinge line. And we have found the trend and plunge of the sigma 1 direction. So there is our fold analysis, and it works out pretty well. You can, with a little bit of practice, you can use visible geology for this um, almost as well as you can do it with paper copies. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button and share this video with other people. I hope this helps.